When it comes to choosing your dog breed, one of the things that you want to make sure fits your lifestyle and requirements is their grooming requirements because it can become incredibly frustrating incredibly quickly if you have a dog that's grooming requirements are through the roof and you have no interest in doing it. So if you're considering a Connie Corso of your next breed, let's take a few minutes to discuss the grooming requirements of them and if they're therefore a great pick for you or not. Anytime you're thinking about the grooming of a dog, you first need to ask yourself what you want to achieve by grooming them. If you're looking to show your dog, then you need to think about bench standards, including clips and coat condition expected in the ring. If on the other hand, you just want your dog to be healthy and happy, then you'll only need the bare minimum. Now, assuming you're hitting the fundamentals, then it's up to you what standards you want beyond that. If you're a pet owner, then as long as your Corso's hygiene and health are attended to and you think that he's gorgeous, the rest is just window dressing. But overall, regardless of whether your Corso is going to Westminster, Crufts or just out patrolling the neighbourhood, its grooming requirements are really quite low. It's a bit of a wash and wear breed, meaning that there's no trimming to be done, no hairstyling, and very little in the way of specialist considerations to be made. The Connie Corso, despite technically having a double coat and therefore being a seasonal shedder, is one of the lowest shedding breeds out there. It also doesn't come with many special features that need managing, like the double dew claws you'll find on a Livestock Guardian, or the deep wrinkles you'd find on a Sharpe. The only thing that poses any kind of challenge to a Corso groomer is how big your bathtub is. So, fundamentals. A Corso's need a decent brush maybe once every 10 days or so. You can get away with just using your hands for this if your dog doesn't mind a firm fuss from you. But even better would be a grooming mitt, a kind of glove that has fine rubber bristles on the palm and fingers for brushing. During shedding seasons, you can increase the frequency to a couple of times a week and even be firmer with your strokes or introduce an undercoat extractor tool to the proceedings. But most Corsos will never need this level of attention to their coats unless they go into a photo shoot or competition. Now, next is bathing. They can get away with bathing once every few months, more if they like to get dirty and less if they're mostly city dwellers. Bathing can be a drag with such a huge dog, meaning that you'll need to fill the tub in advance, line it with a mat or some bath towels to prevent slipping and maybe get a ramp set up for them to climb if you're not up to hauling a 100 pound dog into the bath. A basic dog shampoo lathered into their coat with the same grooming mitt I mentioned before, or again, your own hands, usually is plenty. And once rinsed, you'll have your Corso looking like polished marble again before long. Now, with their coat accounted for, we're looking now at the smaller details of the head. Given their mild susceptibility to eye conditions, a daily wipe down with a cotton bud is a good idea. A weekly ear clean is also a smart move, particularly if you have a Corso whose ears are cropped, leaving the insides more exposed to grime and pathogens. The same can be said for their noses, which warrant a wipe down at the same time. Teeth should be brushed using a finger brush or standard toothbrush and a canine specific toothpaste. Again, once a week is plenty. For Corsos whose noses and paw pads are sensitive to becoming called hyperkeratotic, a balm should be purchased to add to the equation. But this should be done on a needs basis. Now speaking of on a needs basis, we're finally at the bottom of the dog, its claws. If your Corso does most of its exercise on concrete, then its claws are typically self-filing and therefore don't need clipping, just monitoring. If, however, you have a sedentary dog who exercises mostly on grass, then a fortnightly clipping or filing probably will be necessary. Now, as for the claws that don't come in contact with the ground, the dew claws that most Corsos have on their front end, these obviously cannot trim themselves and will need regular attention to prevent them curling in on themselves and impaling the flesh, which can be obviously very painful and lead to infections. And that's pretty much the long and short of it. If your Corso is particularly wrinkled in the face, like its relative, the Neapolitan Mastiff, or its French counterpart, the Dog de Bordeaux, then keeping these wrinkles clean may be another task that you address when wiping the eyes, nose, and ears. But for the most part, these dogs are really easy to stay on top of. A quick brush, and they're good to go. The one final point that needs to be made about grooming your Corso, and this goes for any powerful breed, is that there is an element of risk involved in 
handling your dog to the extent needed for proper grooming. It is therefore essential that as soon as you get your dog, you begin socialization with the grooming positions, holds and equipment. If a nine week old puppy can become desensitized to a Dremel, for example, then life will be much easier and safer in the future. If you already have a dog who is reactive in these situations, then you may need to enlist the help of a professional groomer or behaviorist and probably get a muzzle involved whilst committing to further socialization, desensitization and training in the meantime. That way everybody can be happy and handsome at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed this video all about the glorious Connie Corso. If you did subscribe to to the channel we make videos like this every single week to help you learn everything you could ever possibly dream of knowing about the beautiful Connie Corso.